Hey everybody, Jay Barino here. Welcome back. Got a little something different for you today. I'm going to be casting a replay. And the audio at the beginning was cut off a little bit, so I'm re-recording the intro. But again, I'm going to be casting a replay of a game that I played. It was very long, and I thought it'd be a good time to showcase how I think the right way to play Tychus is, and talk about some of the typical pitfalls, and also a bit of a Z Zagara tutorial as well. So it functions as both of those things. It's a long game. I think you'll enjoy it. And again, it's a little different, and let me know what you think. I would use this as kind of a Tychus... Uh, a tutorial, I suppose. I'm not an expert, but there are a lot of easy traps that people fall into when playing Tychus. I think Tychus is one of the more fun commanders to play in co-op mode. So you go into Direct Strike, and you think Tychus is relatively easy to play. He's really fun, so I'll try him. But interestingly enough, in Direct Strike, I think he is one of the hardest... He is one of the hardest commanders to play. So I thought I could maybe make this to explain away some of the new player traps that folks will fall into. And again, this is a pretty long game, so we can use this to kind of explore some Zagara missteps as well. And with that, you know, we will just go ahead and go to everybody so we can explore the game. This is a very long game. I'm not going to reveal how it ends, but it, it is a pretty interesting one. So on our far left here, uh, we have an Abathur on my team versus uh, a Swan over on the other team. And then we have a Zagara versus Zagara. And we're going to watch and see. Again, we'll, we'll take some time to talk through Zagara as well, because I think she's a very new player friendly commander. So I think this would be good to talk about Tychus, who's probably the hardest to play with new players, versus the uh, easiest, which is Zagara, because Zagara only has a, a small number of viable builds. So our enemy here is going to play a very good, proper, strategic Zagara. And then our uh, my ally here is going to be sort of a, how a new player would probably approach Zagara, so you can see again what not to do and then what to do. And then me, Tychus, throwing down his blaze first against a phoenix, because I think I saw the legionnaires come out uh, pretty early. All right, so let's start with let's start with Tychus. Now, one thing that I've, I've talked about with Tychus several times, am I, am I zoomed out as far as I can go? We want to make sure, there we go, that's as far back as we go. The, the, the aspect is a little odd, again, because we're watching on a, as a replay, and the, the way that it zooms out as part of a replay is different than what, again, if we looked at it from a player perspective, zoomed out. Uh, eventually, this game is going to get so framey that I'll probably cut out a large chunk of the second half of the map, because it would just be a nightmare to watch based on the performance. Uh, that's happening here. So with Tychus, one thing that I've talked about several times is understand that every single one of his units is 650 minerals. They're very expensive. So unlike other commanders where you can you know, you throw down 100 minerals or you throw down uh, 50 minerals worth of a unit, that's relatively cheap. And if it's not, quote, optimal for the situation, you know, who's to really say uh, what exactly is optimal? But, you know, getting as close to optimal as possible, I suppose, strategically, um, you can get over it if your units are cheap, but as Tychus, if you're not building what you need and you throw down a hero that's not really going to work in that specific situation and you don't understand why it wouldn't work, then uh, you're going to have way more problems. And that's why I consider him to be, again, harder to play, and he typically can ruin a game for for his team, Tychus can, because, again, if he's not played correctly, and he's very easy to play incorrectly. So when you go into a game as Tychus, one common thing people will do is they'll review their heroes, and they'll think, hmm, okay, which of these should I which of these should I build? Well, I need damage. And Crooked Sam and and Sirius, uh, you know, they're considered the the guns, right? So we get them for damage. Incorrect. <laughs> Alright, so let me explain what these heroes should be built for. Uh, Crooked Sam, it's all about the demo charge. He has low HP. He can do some auto attack damage, sure, but that's not really what he's about. Uh, his, it's all about this demo charge. You want to use that against Alarak, you want to use that against Alarak motherships, you want to use that against other Tychuses, you want to use that maybe against Dahaka, against Hyperion. Those are the circumstances you build Crooked Sam. You do not build Crooked Sam just so that he can shoot his guns. Alright, it's not why you build him. So if you start a Tychus match and you think you should build Crooked Sam for any reason other than you want to throw the demo charge on something because it can stun what it hits, so again, like, throwing it on Alarak will stop him in his tracks with the upgrade. Uh, and it'll probably kill him, too, and a bunch of his supplicants. But that's the only reason you build Crooked Sammer in those specific circumstances. Uh, Sirius is also another niche, another niche hero that you only build in specific circumstances. He has an upgrade that when he dies, he explodes and kills everything around him. That's good versus Oracles, good versus Centurions, good versus Zealots. Anything melee, anything that gets within semi-melee range, is that that's what it's good for. Also, he has a small chance to fear upon shooting, and so do his turrets. You don't want to rely on that, though. Maybe if you get a ton of Sirius uh, and uh, and build him late game. Y but you can't rely on it. It's not a solid build. 
All right, Blaze and Cannonball both kind of overlap in their roles. You'll notice I chose Blaze this time because I noticed I'm going to be dealing with Sagara Overflow as well as Phoenix with uh, with Legionnaires. Uh, so I went with Blaze instead of Cannonball. But these, some people consider these, you know, they're the tanks. But in reality, what they what they really are is they're they can absorb damage, but they're also really about denying the enemy from dealing damage, right? So Oil Spill in particular, we'll take a look at it. If this reduces attack speed by 75%. That is enormously critical, and you'll notice I get the high-capacity containers in order to increase the, the radius of that. And uh, Cannonball is similar. He his, uh I don't know what the ability is called, but he, he jumps in there and he stuns, and it's about the same radius with the upgrade as the Oil Spill. So that's the same thing. You, you have to spend the extra... Uh, in order to, to get it, but they both function in that same way. So, again, a common mistake with uh, with Tychus as well is not understanding why the oil spill is really good, or why, like, again, you make these units not necessarily to auto-attack in and, and absorb damage, it's because their ability denies the enemy uh, the opportunity to deal damage to you. So, one thing with Tychus is you typically want to be auto, not auto casting, you want to be manually casting certain spells. So if you did make a Crooked Sam for one of those situations I mentioned earlier, you have to take it off auto cast so that you're using it exactly on what you want to use it on. So this game you'll notice specifically with, uh, with Blazes, I'm using the Oil Spill um, on manual cast. And that's because with both of these Blazes, they're both going to run in there. If it was auto cast, they'd both shoot out the, the oil, and then the oil from both of them would dissipate at the same time. Instead, what I do is I shoot one, and we'll, we'll watch the next wave so you can see it in action. I shoot one to debuff as much as possible, then I wait for it to wear off, and then I shoot the other one. That's why you want to manually cast that. It's the same with Cannonball. You want to you be uh, manually casting, not auto-casting Cannonball. So you'll see I will shoot one. They're debuffed for as long as possible. You see how slow these Immortals are shooting? And then I wait for it to wear off, and I shoot the second one. And that allows my Rattlesnakes in the back, which are great versus anti-armor, they do 80 damage with no upgrades, to kill those Immortals. So that's misstep number two, is just thinking that as Tychus, that there's some sort of composition you can make where you don't need to manually cast stuff. Now, you don't need to manually cast, cast everything, but one thing, you, you never want to auto-cast the Crooked Sam demo charge. And uh, you probably want to be manually casting maybe Tychus's grenade and or whatever debuff you have, specifically the oil spill or the or the stun from from Cannonball. Uh, now I don't have the I don't have manually cast on for Shredder grenade. I'm not manually casting the deploy revitalizers. If you're really quick, then yeah, you probably you should do that. But you don't have to. Again, really, you have to pick and choose what are you going to manual manual cast and prioritize. You know which ones are more important. So the Swan here against Abathur is making rapes. I wouldn't really recommend that. I think that's probably uh, a portrait. You just want to make science vessels. Uh, okay, and here once again, rather than trying to hit everything at once, you know, I could do two oil spills. I'd rather just hit the majority of their stuff and then keep it chained. At this point, though, my blazes are actually dying faster than, than, they, than they can throw those down. So if we look at this Phoenix, his Immortals are doing 60 damage versus our blazes in the front line. So arguably, Cannonball would be better because he just outright stuns them. Um, and you'll see I'm, I'm getting more rattlesnakes, and I'm starting to get up to plus two. All right, next typical misstep. And this is a long game. we got a long way to go, so don't worry about uh, uh, us possibly losing right away. Um, misstep is trying to rush up to tier three when you only have one or two heroes. Uh, thinking, oh, i got to get the Sure Shot Network helmet, or yeah, I want to get the XCMC 670 on Blaze. This is a very important upgrade in certain circumstances, and I'll explain more later. But... Understand that getting to, to Tier 2 is 250 resources, and then getting to Tier 3 is 450, and then getting this upgrade for Blaze is 350. You could get two more Tychus heroes about for that amount of money. So you really don't want to even consider getting up to um, to Tier 3 and getting those, those um, super fancy ultimate upgrades until probably you have at least, at least four, five, probably way more than that heroes. It really depends on the circumstance. So because I'm against Zagara and Phoenix, again, Phoenix is dealing 60 damage. We can deny half of that damage with the, the ultimate upgrade on Blaze. Uh, and then against Zagara, for example, the Aberrations do 40 damage versus Armored, and this is all pre-upgrades. Uh, the Banelings do uh, 80 damage. Uh, for example. So, and plus the, the, not to mention the Splitterlings. So, that's where I, I kind of weighed my options, and normally, in most games, I would not recommend getting up to Tier 3 until much, much later. But here, I really needed to be able to absorb that damage uh, with Blaze. But again, it's very, very expensive to do. 
So again, common mistake is people trying to get every upgrade on every hero before they make more. With Tychus, quantity is way more valuable. Again, it depends on the circumstance, though. So I weighed my options, and in this specific circumstance, I said, you know what, the XCMC 670 is going to be so valuable against these Immortals. Because, again, they're doing 60 damage, and then this reduces damage to 30. So we can reduce their damage by half. Uh, so I'm trying to think... Okay, so like a Goliath does 22 damage, right? So that XCMC would provide literally no value against that amount of damage because it's not over 30. So again, you don't want to be getting all those upgrades. You'll notice I haven't gotten any of Tychus' upgrades. The only upgrades I get on Rattlesnake is the uh, Secret Stash Stim Pack to get started because it's relatively cheap. It's only 100 minerals to get that. And it's basically like a healing Stim Pack. It allows him to shoot faster, and I rely on him to do the damage to kill the Immortals. So that's what we need versus versus Phoenix in this specific circumstance. So again, that's sort of like a, a crash course in Tychus. Number one, don't make Nakara first. Don't make Crooked Sam first unless you're in very specific circumstances. Don't make Sirius first. Again, unless you're in very specific circumstances. With Sirius, the only thing I could think of is Mass Centurions, Mass Sentinels, Mass Oracles. Again, anything that gets in melee range, and they built a lot of them. A lot. They'd have to build a ton of them such that the Blaze isn't able to do it for you to make Sirius worthwhile, in my opinion. Do not get Sirius or Crooked Sam simply because they can shoot air. Uh, there's a much better option uh, in that circumstance, and we'll see that later. I would say eight to nine times out of ten, your anti-air needs to be Vega, and uh, and then some combination of ground ground attacks to kill units that she pulls out of the air, and then the, the leftover anti-air is probably going to be Nux. Uh, and then very rarely you'll make Crooked Sam to kill Hyperion or a Mothership, and that's it. Alright, so these rapes are really getting through, and, uh, and our Abathur's struggling to deal with them. He's making Swarm Hosts. The thing with the Swarm Hosts is they do a carry over to help Zagara's wave. It's hard to say, though, you know, how valuable they are. I might pivot here to talk a little bit about Zagara. Uh, you know, I think I've hit all the, the key points with, with Tychus, and just because you see me making Rattlesnake and Blaze does not mean that's the right composition every time. But you almost always, as Tychus, are going to want to be making some combination of Blaze or Cannonball. You need that front line, again, damage denial and absorption. And then some combination of damage dealing, which is going to be um, Rattlesnake, Nux, um, maybe Vega, but not really, and then Tychus, obviously. So, uh, and then Cannonball also deals some really good damage, too, but again, it depends on the circumstance. I'm not able to uh, to really stun this wave properly because I'm using my oil spills. I'm auto cast, not auto cast, I'm manually casting them to get rid of the leftover Zagara stuff as well. So, you can see things aren't looking uh, it too great. Uh, we did get their bunker at some point earlier, and they're starting to push back, and they're probably going to get ours right here pretty soon. Uh, so let's take a diversion here. Again, this is I would consider this more of like a tutorial replay. I chose this game specifically because I thought it'd be good to show Tychus, and it would be good to show Zagara. Right, so Zagara uh, only has a couple of, of viable builds. And typically, not 100% of the time, but most of the time, and this is why she's a good beginner, you only need to build three units as Zagara, usually two. You need to build Aberrations, you need to build Hunter Killers, and occasionally you need to make Scourge. That's it. Uh, you don't really need to make anything else as Zagara. So, all these Zerglings, for example, you need to review in what circumstance you're making Zerglings. Zerglings are good to run in and basically distract and absorb some, maybe, Baneling hits or something. This amount of Zerglings running into another Zagara, she's got a line of Banelings here, um, they're just all going to die at the same time. So whether you have two Zerglings or 20, the outcome is the same, so you wasted money on a huge amount of those Zerglings. So you only need to make those again to distract in certain circumstances. They very rarely are going to be dealing damage that you need. Uh, you just, that's dependent on, again, you need to review what kind of uh, composition your enemy has. But very rarely as Zagara do you need to make Zerglings for anything. So again, just as a, a general rule, you know, there are exceptions, but the general rule is only make Aberrations and Hunter Killers and then, and then Scourge against maybe Capital Ships. But Hunter Killers are also excellent anti-air. So here's the important thing is Zagara. These Aberrations incubate Splitterlings. When these die, they spew out Banelings. So yeah, they do, they're, they're quick, they deal great anti-armor damage. That's just sort of a bonus. The real thing that Aberrations are, they are Baneling delivery mechanisms. So they run in, they get into melee range, they die, they spew out two Banelings that are Splitterlings that do the majority of the damage that you're relying on. So that's one thing people don't realize, is getting, you, basically Zagara, you start the game, you put down Zagara, you rush to Tier 3, you make Aberrations and or Hunter Killers, depending on who you're facing. 
That, and that's why I think she's a good starting commander. She can be countered very easily, though. But that's a good way to start, because then you can say, oh, well, you know, I just got countered. Uh, it wasn't my fault. Even though it might have been your fault, it probably was your fault. But, you know, it's a good way, it's a good fallback, again, to just sort of get started. You can see all those Zerglings just die instantly to the same thing there. Uh, it would have been better to have just have the Aberrations again that spawned the the splitterlings as they die as well. So you'll see these aberrations are going to die, they, they spawn the banelings that blow up and they killed our turret there. So I'm running in here and I'm forced to manually cast an oil spill to clean up the hunter killers. I do have the blaze XCMC 670s, and you'll notice on all these blazes I only have two upgrades, which are the high capacity containers to increase the radius of the oil spill, and then the thing that reduces all the damage, like Taldaran again, he's doing 90 damage, we're reducing that by two thirds, that's huge. Step two is I need to review and say, okay, my blazes are still dying. Do I need more blazes to keep this debuff longer? Or do I need more damage to kill this stuff before it kills my blazes? So one thing I'm doing with my rattlesnakes, and this is also very expensive, is I'm queued up hammer munitions on all of them. Hammer munitions, uh, attacks, deal area damage. And this is usually where Tychus starts taking off, is when you can get hammer munitions if you're against, again, this ground composition of mostly armored stuff. If you're facing ground compositions and air compositions of light units, you probably want to make Nux. If you're facing ground compositions of uh, armored, you probably want to make uh, Rattlesnakes and eventually into Hammer Munitions. But again, you want it's better to get more Rattlesnakes than it is to build one Rattlesnake, rush up to Tier 3, and get Hammer Munitions. You can see, I, I really, really needed the, the Blaze uh, damage reduction against this amount of Immortals. And now keep in mind, if I would have everything on autocast and the oil spills were being autocast, um, they would overlap, and this stuff wouldn't be debuffed for nearly as long, and uh, and we would definitely, I definitely would lose this wave worse than we we're already losing. Now I am comp like all of us are sort of compensating for each other, right? No one's really fully winning their waves. I'm doing mostly okay against Phoenix, and I have to clean up the Zagara wave, but our Abathur can't quite get through, uh, can't quite get through Swan. Excuse me, quite, can't quite get through Swan. He decided to make Leviathans, uh, like building those into wraiths. Wouldn't recommend that, but uh, you usually make Leviathans not necessarily to deal damage, but to tank for something behind them. So he's like, well, I got to keep my Vipers and my Devourers alive to kill those Wraiths. So he put a Leviathan in front. I can see the reasoning, but it's it's not working. Okay, so let's let's review again the Zagara versus Zagara. Um, number one, his Hunter Killers and Zerglings are too close to the front. So what's going to happen is... This, this Zagara is playing exactly what you need to do. You get a line of Aberrations versus enemy Zagara. They smash into the other Zagara. They die. Either they die or they don't die. But if they die, again, they spew the Banelings. Both front lines completely evaporate in one fell swoop. Then, it depends on what do you have behind that. Do you have more Aberrations? Again, you want to put these far enough back so that they're not dying in the front wave. Because, again, as Zagara versus Zagara, their frontline Aberrations are both dying spawning into splitterlings dying, right? So your front line is going to be a wash. So you just need them to clash into each other, come out about even. What you have behind that then is the important thing. So again, that's one you look at Zagara as her wave is... You just want to sweep with like a big explosion in your front line, which are what these aberrations are for. So watch this again. As these aberrations die, they just kill each other and the rest of the front line. The enemy uh, Zagara has more Hunter Killers, more damage dealing behind it, and she's going to be able to push through all of the Zagara stuff. The difference, though, is we do have leftover Swarm Hosts from the previous wave. So yeah, it's a pretty pretty close game. But again, this Zagara is really showcasing a good way to play. And I would argue, typically, only make Aberrations versus Zagara unless you're winning. And they have been. They've typically held the mid for the most part, not every time. Um, I'm doing pretty well in my way because I now have hammer munitions. Hammer munitions coupled with the secret stash stim pack. And you'll notice I'm not getting these other upgrades. I think it's kind of a waste of money. Plus, I, I, have, I mean, I don't want to discount the fact that I have allied units that are stacking with me. The, the allied swarm host. That's helping me a lot as well because they're absorbing some of the immortal shots. And then we're here. We can help clean up the Thors as well. And this is probably one of the best pushes we're going to have in the whole game before we get pushed back again. But again, you'll notice uh, we're doing great anti-armor damage here as their Zagara can just flood in. Again, the Aberrations, you get, you don't think of them as like power units. You think of them as Baneling delivery mechanisms. And any extra auto attack damage they can get in there is a bonus. All right, and our Zagara wins that because we were able to take care of the front line. And let's watch and see uh, how this turns. Again, it's a long game. That's all I'll say. So it's not ending right now. But as we get further into it, I'm probably going to, again, as the performance starts dropping, I'll probably start cutting chunks out of the video because it's a nightmare to watch. 
Okay, and interestingly enough, the Taldaran Phoenix combination here pushes back the Zagara, and here here comes my wave. I am not tooled to push against this Swan wave, though, because he has a lot of Wraiths. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, some of the Wraiths were even leaking to my wave, and uh, I would argue the best way to deal with these Wraiths would be to make Vegas, to pull them out of the sky, and the thing is, uh, again, my wave, my Phoenix wave, didn't, doesn't have any air in it, so it's sort of like, is it worth building against 650 minerals worth of a unit to deal with some rates from a wave that's two waves before mine. And I hate using the excuse, it's not my wave, but they're doing such negligible damage and the Abathur is able to kill them in the follow-up wave anyway, that, or the Zagara is, that I just don't, I don't think it's worth my, my minerals to risk losing to the Phoenix wave uh, at this point uh, to get a unit that otherwise doesn't help against anything else. So I continue to get more Kevs with the Secret Stash Stim Pack and Hammer Munitions. And this allows me to just smash through. Uh, let's watch it happen here. You can see I'm debuffing as much as I can, and I'm manually casting it. I manually cast the Oil Spill the entire game. And that's the only thing I am manually casting. And you'll notice, with that, plus the amount of damage that Kev does in the back, now he's only plus one, he's doing 88 damage, um, we're able to clean up almost everything on the ground here because we kept them debuffed long enough for Kev to do the damage. Kev, Kev has decent HP, but he still dies relatively quick versus anti-armored stuff. So that's why, again, you need those blazes and or cannonballs in there to keep those things perpetually debuffed slash stunned. Other misconception with Tychus is to think that you should get these upgrades really quick. Uh, at Tier 1, you can only get 1-1. One, one. At Tier 2, you can only get 2-2. Two, two. And then at Tier 3, it opens it up to plus 5. They're hugely expensive. It's way better to get more heroes, and then later in the game when you start getting them, it's affecting more heroes, and it's going to be a huge power spike. So again, you're thinking, you know, what power spike am I getting for the amount of money that I'm spending? And your power spike in getting individual heroes is way higher than getting those upgrades uh, relatively early. Again, I still am having to use a... Still having to use an oil spill on every wave here to help clean up Zagara. And then I try to use my remaining oil spills to debuff as much of the Phoenix wave as possible. He's starting to move into carriers, which means we're probably going to see Quilarian pretty soon. And I believe I react to this by getting a Vega uh, relatively soon as well. Now, Vega... Um, well, I guess we'll talk about her more when we, when we get there. More, aber more of Leviathans, which is good to help clean up the leftover Phoenix wave. So I'm killing like a half of a Zagara wave and half of a Phoenix wave. The Abathur comes in us to finish up the Phoenix wave. Kills about half the Swan wave. The shit continues to roll downhill, as you can see how this is happening. And he still doesn't really have a good counter to the Wraiths, which is, a you know, one of the bigger problems of this, this whole circumstance. Now, because he uses a lot of his front line, down go all those Zerglings, because he uses most of his front line to have to kill the leftover Swan units, he doesn't have a front line to deal with these Aberrations, which are going to very easily kill everything left over on the ground. And it's not looking too good, because now I'm, I have to deal with here what looks like to be the majority of the Zagara waves. But... Those Aberrations aren't really much of a problem because of the XCMC 670 suit. So their auto attack plus the Banelings they spew out doing minimal damage to Blaze at the end of the day. And Blaze has, uh... He has, uh, 1400 HP, and more than that. Each armor upgrade as Tychus does benefit, um, uh, their life percentage as well. So that is worth it again, but you don't want to get those too early. It's just not worth the money. It's better to just get more units. Uh, we didn't actually see what happened there, um, but we have a Clolarian on the other team, and Clolarian is heroic, so even if I do get a, well, I have a Vega now, um, this uh, side projector does not pull down heroic units. So I actually have no counter to Clolarian at this point, and this is where I would consider, like, okay, maybe you get a Crooked Sam and, and manually cast the demo charge. And I was thinking about that, but I also thought, you know... It's, it's hard to say if that's really worth it, just because, it, again, it's 650 resources to kill one unit that I'm pretty confident my Abathur teammate can kill. Meanwhile, my ground units can get in and start dealing damage to the Swan ground. So, again, maybe that wasn't the right choice. Maybe I should have gotten Crooked Sam to deal with Polarian. Uh, and we'll see how that ends up going in the long run. Okay, so we're killing the majority of those leftover Zagara wave. I'm throwing down my oil spills where possible, and I'm staggering them so that we're not wasting the duration as much as possible. You'll notice Vega right there. She pulled down all of the scouts, and uh, keep, scouts are armored. Uh, carriers are armored, which means when they're pulled down, uh, Rattlesnake is just going to plow through them. So this is why I said don't make Crooked Sam or Sirius simply because they can shoot air. Vega is just such a better option to kill armored air units. 
Um, and then maybe Nux, like if you have a huge amount of rates or a huge amount of Mutalisks, you probably just want to make Nux because of the splash damage. That coupled with Tychus Grenade, you probably want to manually cast those so that you can kill forms of groups of air units. But if it's capital ships, you, your better bet is probably going to be Vega, and, to, and then just rely on the rest of your units to kill them once they're on the ground. But again, it depends on the circumstance. Nux is really good. Um, like, Kerrigan Broodlords is the one circumstance where Tychus is pretty hard counted. You kind of need a Nux, but he's also extremely expensive to upgrade. So if I was Kerrigan, and I made Broodlords, and my enemy made a Nux to try to counter them, then I would simply just switch to Torasks. Because once he commits to a Nux, then, again, that's the thing. His units are so terribly expensive that once he commits to something, you can quickly counter it. <laughs> <laughs> with cheaper units, and then again, that's what Kerrigan is. Kerrigan is probably the hardest counter to Tychus, uh, in my opinion. Maybe Nova as a number two. All right, so otherwise, the game is going pretty well. Again, we're going to start seeing some, some heavy lag here, and I hope this has been pretty informative for, for Tychus. Again, this is just going to continue to get uh, crazier and crazier, and the biggest thing here is with this with Sagara, I normally wouldn't advocate for selling stuff, but most of these Zerglings, like I said, are wasted. Whether he had half this number, maybe even 25% of this number of Zerglings, they just get killed by Banelings and do nothing of value after that. Uh, so whether he had, you know, fewer to absorb the Banelings or not doesn't matter. So his front line of Aberrations dies, which leaves the back line of Red's Aberrations to go in there and kill all the rest of this stuff. All these Swarm Hosts just get killed by Aberrations. And see, even though they're dying, they spew the Banelings and kill those Swarm Hosts anyway, even if they can't see them. So that's absolutely killer. So let's speed this up, and again, as we start hitting more and more frame drops, I'll probably cut out a large part of this, and then you can see where this ends up going in the late game. But I'm starting to get, I, again, I have, I think I have a Vega, I might get a second one. But yes, I do. And here's, an, uh, you know, going back to the common Tychus mis missteps, don't get every upgrade. Only get the upgrades that you need. For Vega, she's got these things that basically buff the, the Dominate ability. I don't care about her Dominate. You know, there's some circumstances, like maybe against the Dahaka, where you want to take and pay, you want to steal Impalers or something. Yeah, sure. Uh, consider upgrading the the Domination ability. But the only thing I have Vega for is Psy Projector, so I've only spent 100 minerals to get Psy Projector, and that's it. All, your, all the rest of your resources are just so precious. Don't get upgrades that are pointless. Like, uh, on... Blaze. I don't get Hades Oil. I don't get Wild Flame Fuel Additives. I don't care if the if the inflamed effect spreads. It doesn't matter. That's a ton of money you don't need. So don't bother. So again, this is why I say Tychus is one of the harder just harder commanders to play simply because in Direct Strike, it's so important that you effectively spend your resources, and it's so easy. He's the easiest commander to ineffectively spend your resources. You can see now, I if if. Given the opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with Phoenix, I smash through him, minus Polarian, because Vega can't bring him down, unfortunately. Or maybe she can, and I just don't have enough. May yeah, maybe I, I... I don't think she can, again. I, I I think you can pull down... I don't... No, you can't pull down Motherships either, because they're heroic. Motherships do very, very well against uh, against Tychus, unless you, you need Crooked Sams to, to stun them and, and do a lot of damage with the Demolition Charge. Okay, so let's go back to speeding it up. We can go back to plus four. And uh, again, now we've got the Zagara waves smashing into each other. And again, in a Zagara versus Zagara, you make a line of aberrations. If you are winning, if your team is winning and you hold the middle, then start adding hunter killers behind that. Otherwise, just keep make another line of aberrations, but further back. All right, so we're coming in and... Uh, it looks like my, my Vegas died before they could pull down the extra carriers, unfortunately. So we're, we're leaking a little too much into our, on our, into our allied waves next. Uh, the amount of Vipers in here is helping, but it's still not quite enough. And Wraiths and Devourers sort of counter each other. I think in the long run, Devourers will win because they do splash damage. Wraiths do great damage versus anti-air armored, but so do Devourers, and again, they also do splash damage. But the cost effectiveness is higher for Wraiths. All right, so these leftover swarm hosts again—they're there, but they haven't really been able to, to properly clump. So I, I'm facing basically a little bit from all three waves here. We can see how this goes. We got dominates going down on the Thors, and then there's several scouts here. Those are going to eat my uh, my stuns from Vega to pull them down. But you can see just how much sheer damage we're doing with Kev, because again, the key to this is all about staggering your your damage debuffs. 
And again, if you're making cannonballs instead, don't let those run in there and all run in and stun at the same time. You want to stagger the stuns. And if your opponent is smart, they'll spread out enough so that you can't hit enough stuff to make it worthwhile. That's the key as well. So like if he made two or even three distinct lines of immortals so that I could only, like rather than making a, a straight horizontal line, if he made a line vertically back, then it would force me to wait to, to throw the oil spills down. Uh, again, basically, if you can force Tychus to not be able to stun or debuff as, you know, as many, you know, units as possible, that's that's a better way to play against him. But my, my Kevs, again, do so much sheer damage at this point that uh, it'll start really working out for us. I got another Vega, and that's questionable. He does have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 units to pull down. She can only pull down 5. So I technically did need a, a third Vega. Hard to say again if that's worth it or optimal or what. So at this point, I'm sort of, I'm sort of keeping things together for my team, and it, things will continue like this for a while. The thing with Tychus, though, is I have, I can get you know plus three, four, five, and that's going to make Kev do an absolutely absurd amount of damage, uh, and also buff up the health of Blaze to just an absurd amount. Um, Tychus, I got this Sure Shot network Networked Helmet. He does extra damage for the amount of heroes you have. Again, this is another thing that it's better to get more units and then get these upgrades later for an enormous power spike rather than spending the money early and foregoing units. It's better to, again, get more units, maintain the middle, and then later you can get massive power spikes in these upgrades rather than a relatively small one early that won't actually help you maintain the middle or even win. Okay, so again, I'm just going to go ahead and bump up the game speed, and eventually, like I had mentioned, uh, I'm probably going to start cutting out pieces, because this was... I don't think this was the longest game that I've played, but it's up there in the top three in terms of length uh, that I've played. I got another Blaze as well. Again, I realize the ability to debuff this stuff is terribly important, so I need to make sure that I have enough Blazes to, one, uh, debuff the Zagara wave previously, and then, two, to debuff all of this. And you'll notice, again, I'm staggering them with the Blazes that are left alive. And look how fast those carriers die when they get pulled out of the air. It's really hard for me to say what this Phoenix could have done differently. And, you know, uh, to be fair, while I do think I am playing a good Tychus match here, Phoenix is a very strong commander early and in the mid game, but he drops off severely in the late game. And I don't know what, what could be done differently. I don't know what, what could be done balance-wise to, to change that, but Phoenix just is just... He just drops off so severely late game. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that his demi-heroes benefit from a certain number of of units. Like here, you can have extra Colossi added up to a maximum uh, to decrease the, the cooldown on Purification Blast, for example. Um, at, at a certain point, um, you know, Colossi start adding to that benefit. So, like, there's still Colossi, but, the, you know, your, your main thing with Phoenix are these Demi Heroes. And this is where I told our Zagara, like, just consider making only Aberrations, because all the I, every time I look over, I'm like, there, why are there more Zerglings here, right? They're wasteful. Just make, keep making lines of Aberrations. That's the best way to go. And, and ultimately, you know, he could move these Hunter Killers back. He might have a more comparable time with the enemy Zagara. All right, so as Tychus, again, we've got more Vegas. And I think we're at the point now where I'm probably just going to go ahead and cut out a good chunk of the video, and I'll be back when we're much later in the game, and the frame rate's gonna be god-awful, I'm warning you now, but again, we'll kind of review where we're at in the game, and then, uh... <laughs> yeah, just, just the frames. Again, we've been fighting over the middle for a long time. They've had a pretty distinct advantage. Uh, the only way that's able to make some forward progress is mine, and uh, I can only do that for so long. But I think I'll come back, you know, in the maybe like 20 minutes game time or something, and, uh... Again, I'm able to just absolutely crush this Phoenix Wave. He doesn't have enough DPS to get through my front line before my Kevs just obliterate him. And my Vegas are able, able to start pecking away at the Clolarian to make it a little easier for my Abathur. So I'm able to give my Abathur just a clean wave. He's a, Other than Clolarian, he's able to go straight into Swan with no leftover leaks at all. And then slowly he leaks, Zagara leaks, and I clean up the leftovers. And that's why we've got pretty much an exactly even game at this point. So what will start making the difference, I suppose you'll see. But, you know, again, I've got these big power spikes ready to go. I just got up to plus five. Look how much damage uh, Rattlesnake does. That's insane. Okay, so again, this is going to become insufferable to watch because of the frame rates and the skipping and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording now, and I'll be back uh, again when more impactful things start happening. I guess let's watch this one wave because, again, I'm dealing with a, a lot of Swan and uh, Zagara leftovers, and you'll see that I'm still able 
to get through it, and it's all just because I'm manually casting Oil Spill. That's it. And just make sure that you're staggering it. And Blaze has so much HP, you can rely on him to be alive long enough to, to continue staggering those. And Kev just blasting through. <laughs> just absolutely blasting through this stuff. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, and we're back. Uh, some things have changed. Uh, you'll notice I'm up to 5-5, which puts my Rattlesnakes up to over 1,000 HP. My Blaze is up to 1,200. And just watch how fast this Phoenix Wave just utterly melts. melts. You can see he's got more Colossi. He has more carriers. But uh, we just once the carriers are brought down, we just absolutely trash them, specifically with the amount of damage that Kev is doing because we've got these upgrades now. But again, the idea with the upgrades is they're, they're power spikes for when you have more units later. I've also added some Nuxes. Nux, I think, at a certain point, the AoE just sort of becomes king. He's very expensive to upgrade with all of this, but the N3 networking reduces cooldowns, which allows me to use oil spill more often. And uh, I, I just sort of feel bad for this Phoenix again, because Phoenix late game just doesn't have an answer. I, the best you can do is use uh, is use uh, Phoenix himself to, uh, to stasis part of the heroes. And again, I think maybe splitting the maybe like three distinct rows of... Uh, of Immortals that they stream in rather than all at once to get all debuffed, but... But again, at this point in the game, AoE really becomes king. And uh, we're still fighting over the middle, you know, we had we made some progress and then they pushed us back. Uh, and now we're back in the middle. And uh, our Abathur is starting to get some Guardians, which does help against the leftover Zagara stuff. Um, because they, they last for more than uh, his own wave along with the, the Swarm Hosts. And that's what Abathur is pretty good at, is surviving and keeping units that stack, but his damage output in, output in general is not great. Um, all, the, all the folks are talking about not having much build space, which is true. Um, again, Zagara now having some Scourge thrown in there. And you'll notice again, uh, only making those units, those three units that I said. And these Banelings you get for free, they're on a cooldown timer. And they're like 110 minerals, so I just... I don't feel like you should ever be building Banelings as Zagara because you get them for free at a pretty reasonable rate. And then further, um, again, that's kind of pricey for what you get, and then you instead just make apparitions to just dump two of them right at the enemy's feet. So any any anything that we can get from uh, from our Rattlesnakes uh, damage in on... Uh, on Swan allows our Abathur to go in at a little bit more even footing and, and really start laying down the hurt. And we do see more Science Vessels. Science Vessels are definitely the right choice versus Abathur earlier. Instead, he made Wraiths, which was kind of an odd choice. But they worked. Wraiths did work for a while. Um, but really against most Zerg, like Kerrigan and Abathur specifically, against Raynor, against Nova, um, Science Vessels are extremely useful and, and cost-efficient for that matter. Even though it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to hold your wave, they stack really well with your teammates. They do a ton of damage with a Radiate. Uh, they're just fantastic. All right, so now Arzagara. One thing I should point out, it's in the message log, actually. Um, somewhere back here, I say... Zagara, move your hunter killers back. The Baneling Splash is getting to him too early. He did that, and then he said, Hey, good advice. I smoke too much weed. But simply by doing that, as the frontline aberrations die of reds, they're not just busting open and killing the hunter killers that are right there. At least they'll survive for a little bit of extra time. So, this is also, you know, more direct strike overall advice. It's easy to get frustrated when you feel your teammates aren't doing what you think is the right thing. Number one, you might be wrong. Number two... Um, sometimes, even though you're frustrated, if you, you know, calm yourself and figure out a way to provide that in a reasonable way, um, the, if they do it, then you might win. I've actually had several games where I'll say, like, hey, I think blank would work really well against Rainer. I think blank would work really well against Deimos Vikings, you know, etc., etc. I think you need blank to deal with the Ultralists. And then they'll change what they're doing, and we win. When otherwise we would have been losing up until that point. As opposed to, you know, flaming your teammates or even just saying, like, why can't you just make blank? It's really, I mean, it's tone policing, but if you want to win, it's a team game and communication is part of that. So simply, number one, saying, you know what, sometimes you lose. Sometimes you lose. It's, it's 3v3. Sometimes your teammates, or you for that matter, just aren't able to do the right thing. And you lose, or you're hard counted. Like if you're if you're a Zagara and you're against Han and Horner, you're probably just gonna lose. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> my my PC is going to crash right now, too. And this is because StarCraft 2 runs on a single CPU core. This has nothing to do with your your graphics card power. It's, it's entirely your CPU. And uh, because the engine itself is, again, designed to only run on a single core, so unless you have a single CPU core that can do the Lord's work, which, you know, nobody in the consumer uh, PC industry would be able to do that. So any extra damage that my teammates can do to Phoenix's wave just means that I'll be able to kill it faster. And, uh, I, I mean, the thing is, at full strength, I just obliterate Phoenix's wave, without a doubt. And I'm still manually casting oil spill. Every single wave, I'm manually casting oil spill, and look how fast I just absolutely smash through this. I'm even able to kill Quolarian because I have enough, um, Vegas and Nuxes, which sit, just shoot up. They're able to just shoot them out of the sky. And, yeah, Mood is asking, why can't I kill those units? Um, it, it's because I'm killing him so fast, he's unable... Phoenix is, you know, pretty consistent damage, but he doesn't have damage spikes, so it's just... You know, at, at full upgrades, there's simply nothing here really most commanders can do. And I would argue, as a Tychus player, if you can get this late into a game without losing for your team, if you haven't been responsible for losing for your team, you sort of deserve the win. That's my view on it. Tychus is, it requires a little bit more micromanagement and attention, so if you are able to have gotten to this point without being the reason your team loses and a game goes this long, you sort of just deserve it. <laughs> but um, this is sort of a situation where whoever gets to the... The, the fortress first or the nexus first is gonna win because you're you know we have so many units that you know it wouldn't take much to simply get there and just blast just utterly roast the the planetary so whoever gets there first again if they stack up two or three waves uh and then they just make a sweep straight to our nexus we could very easily lose and i've had that happen a couple times um, uh, well, I've also won a couple times that way, too, where it seemed like our planetary has had, like, 20 HP, and then you stack up, and then you're able to clump up and make a, 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 a good, smart tech switch, and then you win, just like that. Also, I didn't turn my music back on for this, but that's okay, because we're right at the end here. But yeah, this is a this is a pretty sweet game, and again, the again you got the the Vegas in there pulling down enough of the carriers, and then our our rattlesnakes, 120 damage, is just absurd. The Rattler. That's what I'm talking about. And then I, any blazes left alive, I'm getting back there and I'm manually casting Oil Spill to debuff as much of Swan as possible. And the weak link is definitely between the Phoenix and the Swan Waves at this point. But Swan can definitely clean me up. And uh, here's another example to talk about um, bl the Blaze Suit and where it might not be worth it, right? So, uh, reduces damage down to 30. Swan... Thors do 39 damage. So you think, wow, they, and they do two attacks. That's 78 damage. Um, it seems like that would be uh, critical to get the Blaze Suit. Incorrect. Uh, the Blaze Suit reduces 39 damage to 30 two times. So you're really saving yourself 18 damage. You're not saving yourself um, over 30 at all. Um, so again, that's a situation where you got to think like, okay, it's not worth rushing to that. Maybe eventually in the game you want to get there, but early on... Uh, before you have probably like 8 or 10 heroes, not worth it. Not worth it at all. So now our Zagara's getting to the, uh, the Phoenix wave uh, because she's able to handle a lot of the Zagara wave because of the leftovers. Again, because there are guardians here to help out, etc., etc. Again, a lot of it has to do with how, how much damage can they do. And this Phoenix has the stasis on uh, autocast. you got to save that and use it probably on the blazes so I can't oil spill his units. And it's, it's actually, it's quite satisfying for me to watch that wave just get evaporated. And almost there, and I think because our Kevs are attacking the planetary, there we go, and that's the end of the game. What a match. Uh, and again, I think that this was a, this was a good Tychus showcase. You know, it provided a lot of time for me to explain the basics for Tychus, and it provided me a, a lot of time to explain, again, an example of, you know, a Zagar that's doing seemingly the right thing, and a Zagar that's doing seemingly the... The wrong thing, at least early on, but you see again now you've got the staggered rows of aberrations with the hunter killers in the back. Um, and that's when we started winning, is when he changed that up, and so that he was able to stack a bit more with Abathur, and then I could just smash. I mean, honestly, let's be straight. The reason we won is because Phoenix drops off in the late game. There's simply nothing this Phoenix could have done. Arguably, he should have just made more immortals, 
Uh, Vega and Rattlesnake counter air armored ca uh, capital ships too well to the point where he realized that I was when he realized that I was smart enough to know what to do he should have just stopped with the carriers and gone straight immortal and colossi at that point and uh, my Vegas would have effectively been wasted I did get a Nakara out here at the end uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of Nakara and I almost would never recommend people build her and it hurts my soul anytime a Tychus I see a Tychus build Nakara first and if you win a game by doing that, it's not because of Nakara. It's because of your teammates. I'm telling you now. <laughs> Don't make Nakara first. She's great here. I mean, right now, she's got she's got the, uh, the restorative burst, which is great when you have a lot of heroes because they all get hit by it. So again, Tychus, think of things as in power bursts. And how, is, how cost efficient is a power burst going to be? The money for a Nakara in order to get restorative burst is way, way, way more efficient and powerful when it's being cast on this many heroes instead of just Tychus. All right. Well, I hope this, again, I hope this was informative. I hope this interested you. I'm happy to hear other, uh, other information and other opinions on Tychus. You know, I'm not saying never make Nakara. I'm not saying never make Sirius. Those are probably the two heroes that you should be making the least, though. Uh, there are very specific and niche circumstances for them. Crooked Sam, just a little bit, you know, Tychus v. Tychus is an awful matchup. You want to make Blazes and Crooked Sams. Uh, Crooked Sam versus Alarak, uh, Motherships. Again, anything, again, that's huge that you can't pull down and kill with Rattlesnake Vega is where you need uh, Crooked Sam, which is uh, Hyperion. Not too, There really aren't that many uh, times where that's necessary. But okay, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.